Hello my dear students. In this video lesson we are having a discussion on poetic rhythm, foot and meter. When you read a rhyming poem, one of the things you might notice is how the words often have a nice rhythmical quality. That is, there is a pattern to the rhythm of the words that makes them musical to recite and easy to remember. Sometimes the rhythm is a simple one and sometimes it is more complex. But it's not there by accident. Poets deliberately arrange their words in such a way as to create those rhythmical patterns. While talking about rhythm in words, you probably know that in music the rhythm of a song is the beat. This beat is often created by instruments such as drums, bass, guitars, etc. In fact, in pop music, the drummer and bass guitarist in a band are often referred to as the rhythm section because they established rhythm for the rest of the musicians to follow. Unlike a song, poems don't have a rhythm section. There is no drummer or conductor establishing the rhythm. Instead, the rhythm is set by the stresses or accents in the words themselves. We know that words are made of syllables. A syllable is the smallest unit of pronunciation. It has at least one vowel and a word can be made of more than one syllable. For example, water is made of two syllables, water. Examination is a word made of five syllables, examination. If a word has more than one syllable, one syllable is often pronounced more strongly than others. This strongly pronounced syllable is known as accented or stressed syllable. For example, in the word complete, we have two syllables and the second syllable is more stressed than the first syllable. If a word has just a single syllable, that syllable might be stressed or might not be. Generally, short words like a and i and the are not stressed. But on the other hand, nouns and verbs, that means things and action words, are often stressed, even when they are just one syllable long. So for example, words like cat and jump are stressed syllables. The easiest way to tell if a word is stressed or not is to put it in a sentence and then read it aloud. Listen carefully to how you pronounce it to see if you can tell which words or syllables are stressed and which ones are not. So let's have an example. Read the following line and see if you can hear the stressed syllables. My mother ate an apple and my father ate a pear. Could you identify the syllables which were given more emphasis than others? Let's make it more clear by capitalizing the stressed syllables. Here we have an alternative stressed and unstressed syllable pattern. All even numbered syllables are stressed and all odd numbered syllables are unstressed. Means the first syllable is unstressed, the second syllable is stressed, the third syllable is unstressed, fourth syllable is stressed, like that. Now we can discuss our topic in detail. Uh, first of all, rhythm. Rhythm can be defined simply as patterns of stressed and unstressed syllables in poetry. It is the ups and downs created by the well-structured combination of stressed and unstressed syllables that produce the rhythm in poetry. Let me explain it by a simple example. What did you feel after listening to the sound played in the guitar? You must have felt bored, right? There were no ups and downs. 
only one sound was produced so you were listening to uh, the same monotonous sound it would have been a terrible experience for you now listen to this music What do you feel now? Did you find it rhythmic? There were varieties of sounds which were well structured and well organized, right? Did you find any ups and downs in it? I was only using an example uh, to make you understand what rhythm is. One thing you have to remember is that poetic rhythm and rhythm in music are not exactly the same. Poets use uh, different literary elements in different ways to create rhythm. Meter and feet are two significant poetic elements that are used to create rhythm. We have already discussed the term scansion in our previous class. It is the act of scanning or analyzing poetry in terms of its rhythmic components. While doing scansion marks, we represent the rhythm of a line or a verse text graphically indicated by marked accents, feet, etc. Here you have an example for scansion marking. The curved lines indicate unstressed syllables, while the straight lines show stressed syllables. Now let's look at how rhythm, meter and foot are related. Poetic foot is a combination of stressed and unstressed syllables. Let's have a look into the five types of feet used in poetry. First one, I am. It is a combination of two syllables. The first syllable is unstressed and the second syllable is stressed. Iambic feet is the most commonly used feet in English poetry. Here you have some examples for iambic feet. In the first example, there are five iambic feet in that line. The second and third examples are lines taken from Shakespeare's poems. Shakespeare normally uses five iambic feet in his poetry. The last example is taken from a poem of Christopher Marlowe. He has used four iambic feet in his line. In the case of Trochi, we have a stressed syllable followed by an unstressed syllable. So the first syllable is a stressed syllable and the second syllable is unstressed. Here you have some examples for trochaic pattern of feet used in poetry. Anapest is a combination of three syllables. The first two syllables are unstressed and the last syllable is stressed. Dactyle is just the opposite of anapest. It is also a combination of three syllables. The first syllable is stressed and the second and third syllables are unstressed.
spondy is a combination of two syllables both syllables are stressed two equally stressed syllables are needed for making a spondic feat because of this nature of the spondy a serious poem cannot be solely spondic it would be almost impossible to construct a poem entirely of stressed syllables therefore the spondy usually occurs within a poem having another dominant rhythm scheme. So this feat can be repeated in a line. So we can have uh, different numbers of feet in a line of a poem. Meter and rhythm of the poem depend on the type and number of feet in a line. Meter can be roughly defined as the number of feet in a line. The dictionary defines meter as arrangement of words in regularly measured, patterned or rhythmic lines or verses. As we have already mentioned, roughly we can define meter as the number of feet in a line. Meter and feet together make the rhythm or form the rhythm of a poem. So we have different types of meter. First one is a monometer. Monometer refers to a line in a poem where we have only one foot. A diameter has two feet in a single line. A trimeter has three feet in a single line. A tetrameter has four feet in a single line. And a pentameter has five feet in a single line. So there are other types of meters such as hexameter means six meter in a line. Heptameter means 7 feet in a line. Octameter means 8 feet in a line. So it is important to note that a line in poetry can have more than one type of foot also. So feet and meter are the building blocks that help to create the rhythm in a poem. As seen from the above explanation, now we know that a meter refers to the number and type of feet in a line of a poem. So we decide what meter is used in a poem by counting the number of feet in a line and by analyzing what types of feet are used in that particular line. So we can have some examples. Here we have a line from a poem. That time of year thou mayst in me behold so this line is divided based on the number of feet in the line so we have five feet in this line in the case of the first foot we have two syllables uh, the first syllable is unstressed and the second syllable is stressed in the second third fourth and fifth feet also we have two syllables each and the first syllable is unstressed and the second syllable is stressed so based on the type of feet the line is iambic in nature and by counting the number of feet we have five feet here that means pentameter so in this line uh, the poet has used iambic pentameter we have another line and the sound of a voice that is still Again, we have divided this line based on the number of feet. Here we have three feet. In the first foot, we have three syllables. In the second foot also, we have three syllables. And in the third foot also, we have three syllables. In all these uh, feet, the first two syllables are unstressed and the last syllable is stressed. So the type of feet used in this line is anapest and based on the number of feet we have a trimeter here. So based on the type and number of feet we can say that the line has used anapestic trimeter. So in this video lesson we have discussed rhythm, meter and poetic feet. A poetic foot is a single unit of a combination of stressed and unstressed syllable in a line of a poem and it is the number and type of the feet used in a line that decides the meter of that poem. 
and it is the meter and the feet that decides the rhythm of the poem. So that is the end of this uh, video lesson. Thank you.